Welcome back to iClone3D.com, the number one place for all your animation needs. And in today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can take inspiration for our lighting setups in iClone from real world films. So we're specifically going to be using reference images from particular movies that we can actually then recreate and replicate that lighting setup in iClone 8. So without further ado, let's crack on with today's tutorial. So on my screen here, you can see we've got this image from a film called Sperm World. And the lighting setup here is very particular. As you can see, we've got some nice cinematic lighting going on. We've got a key light lighting up our character's face with most of him in kind of a dark shaded black area. And we've also got a nice blue tone with a vignette around it. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking at how we can actually recreate that lighting setup in iClone 8. So the first thing we wanna do is you wanna bring in the image to your iClone scene just so we can use it as a reference and so we can manipulate some of the colors from the image in our scene. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to where I have my image stored. And what you wanna to do to bring it in as a plane, you just wanna hold down control on your keyboard and then we'll left click and we'll drag it back into iClone. And you can see that now sets it up as a plane. So I'm just gonna scale this up a little bit and reposition it. But what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using this as a reference so we can actually see exactly where we are with the lighting setup in iClone. So once you've brought your image in, what we wanna now do is, of course, we wanna replicate this same color pattern. So to do it, we wanna firstly create some sort of backdrop that we can actually use as the background in our scene. So I'm gonna go into my content and in our pack section, if you've got the Lightroom Studio, we can use this really nice backdrop that we've got here. So I'm just gonna double click this and that's gonna now place this white backdrop in our scene. So if I hide this, you can see behind that we've got our image. So what we wanna do is the first thing to do is we wanna get the kind of color pattern the same as the image. So I'm gonna just zoom out a second and we're gonna bring this image a little bit closer here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually change the color to match this color here. So to do that, we're gonna select the backdrop, then we're gonna come into our materials tab and under the diffuse section, we're gonna click on the color palette here and we're gonna say pick screen color. And then we can now select any part of the image here and you can see it starts to change our backdrop to that color. So you just wanna pick the kind of color that you wanna replicate. So I'm gonna pick a more darker shade here and we'll just select that and then we'll hit okay. And now you can see we've changed our backdrop to a similar color as the image. And now what we wanna do is of course, we wanna get that really kind of nice light in color, that nice vignette in around the corners and the edges. So to do that, the first step, we're gonna actually turn off all of these lights that we've already got in the scene. So I'm just gonna hold shift and select them all. And then I'm gonna turn off all of those lights. And you can see we still haven't achieved complete darkness. And to do that, we wanna go into our visual tab and we wanna deactivate the IBL. So if I turn this off, you can now see we've got complete darkness in our scene. Now, the first step is we're gonna create a spotlight. So we're gonna come up to create and we're gonna say spotlight. And then we're just gonna reposition this. Now you can turn on your auxiliary light just for ease of seeing the scene and seeing where you're kind of at. And then we'll bring that light back in and we'll turn off auxiliary. And now you can see we've got a nice kind of spotlight on the background. Now what we wanna do is we just wanna center this and get it in the kind of correct ratio. And you're gonna see very quickly that when we actually move into position, we've now got that nice little kind of uh, circular lighting, but of course we just need to manipulate some of the spotlight. So to do that, we're gonna come into our modifier tab here and we can increase the angle of that here. And then you can see that creates a really nice light. And of course it's a bit harsh here around the edges. So to change that, we can play with the fall off and we can bring that a little bit down or you can bring it up if you want it more harsh. But of course in the image, you can see it's a really nice soft light. And so we're gonna bring that to a hundred. We can also play with the attenuation as you can see here, and that will just increase that vignette. And if we raise it up, you can see we get more black edges around the corner. Of course, it's really up to you what you're going for, but I'm gonna kind of try and replicate that image. So I'm gonna leave it at about 40. And now you can see already, we have got the background looking pretty close to our reference image. If we take a look at the reference image and our image here side by side, 
you can see we're getting quite close to that look. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna decrease this lighting area here using the range because it's a little bit of a, quite a large area. So we can just decrease the range a little bit here and you'll see that will then bring that range down a little bit just to get it more closer to that image that we're looking at. Now, what we also wanna do is with our light selected, we're gonna come up to the color palette here and we're just gonna change the color to a kind of darker shade of blue as we can see in our kind of image here. The blue is a little bit different color and we're just gonna match that a little bit here by playing around with the color. And this looks pretty nice to me as you can see here. And so we'll hit okay. And now you can see we've got a really nice look going on. So again, you can play around with a few different things. We can tweak the darkness here and you can see it doesn't do much in, in this circumstances. So we'll leave that. And you can play with a few different things, maybe bringing down the range a little bit, depending on what you're going for. You can also use a shape here so we can actually change it to a tube and we can then play around with the radius of the tube and the softness of it all just to kind of play around with things as you can see here when we increase that length, kind of just shapes that light a little bit differently. So it really is just about creatively what you're going for here. But again, you can just tweak this in a few different ways just to start to refine the look of the lighting setup. Now, once you're happy with this initial kind of lighting scheme and you've got your background looking how you want it, etc., we're gonna move on now to adding some nice light into our character so we can start to see what's going on with our character. So I'm just gonna hide this spotlight a second so we can actually see this, but you can see already it looks really, really nice. Now we're gonna come and we're gonna create a second spotlight. So we're gonna go light and spotlight, and then we're just gonna bring this into shot by dragging it over and repositioning it to a place that we're happy with. But what we wanna do is we wanna get this light to look at our character so we can right click and we can say, look at target, and then we can select our character here. And now you can see, of course, you know, it's a nice bright spotlight. But what we wanna do is just angle it off to the position where it's just adding a nice little bit of light to our character's face, as you can see here. And you can see it looks really nice already, but of course, you know, the hair is a little bit kind of, a bit too lit up. So one thing we can do, a little trick, we can actually go up to our modify tab and we can use this exclude effect button to actually exclude the hair from the scene. So if we search for the object by typing in hair and we select our character's hair, we can then go to the light panel on the effect side and we can actually turn off the spotlight so it doesn't actually affect the hair. And now you can see it's not actually impacting the hair when we deselect it. So it's a really cool way that we can actually get the light in not to impact the hair in this specific shot. So now you can see we've got a really nice lighting setup going on here, guys. And again, we're just gonna do a few adjustments to the spotlight by adding a shape to it. We're gonna add a rectangular shape this time, and we're just gonna increase the width to make that light a little bit softer on the character's face and you can really start to see how soft that light gets when we increase things like the width and the height. Now again, you just wanna be careful here because you don't wanna overdo it because we don't want too much light leaking out on our character's face. But now you can see we've got a really nice soft light on the character and we can also adjust things like the angle here so we kind of tweak that angle so it's not too heavily on the character's face and if you see here now it's starting to get a lot darker and look a lot more like our image so this is really really nice i'm really happy with how this lighting is starting to look on the character again we maybe want to kind of take a bit of that lighting off of the neck so we can raise it up a little bit and maybe move it back a little bit just to kind of reposition it but again this is starting to look really, really nice, guys, as you can see here. Again, you can just play around with this until you get the look that you're happy with. But this, to me, looks pretty, pretty cool. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go to our color palette again here near the Multiply tab, and we're just gonna then say Pick Screen Color, and we're just gonna select the background color here. So we're just gonna try and get a nice lighter color here. And again, if you're not kind of getting a color that you want, you can manually do it just to get the right color that you want. But this looks pretty cool here. I'm gonna hit okay. Now you can see we've got that nice blue reflecting off the character's face.
Now we can increase the multiplier a bit depending on how kind of strong you want that light, but this looks pretty cool to me if we just increase it up a little bit. You can see we've got a really, really nice look going on here, guys, that looks really awesome. And it looks really close to the image. If we actually take a look at the two images side by side, you can see how close we're getting to replicating that look of real world lighting taken from this film that we're using here. So we're really taking the inspiration just from this image to recreate that lighting setup. Now we're starting to get really close to that image. So a couple of tweaks that we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a little bit more softness to this light here by increasing it. And we're gonna increase that height a little bit as well, just to soften that light a little bit. And we can also increase our shadow darkness here just to kind of add a little bit more darkness back to the scene. But again, it looks really, really nice, guys. We're getting really close to replicating that image. We can also play with things like the range and just see how that affects the image. As you can see here, it's doing a little bit to the image so it looks nice. We can bring it down a little bit just to kind of impact that range. I'm just gonna tweak that a little bit. And again, you don't wanna overdo it because we do wanna keep some of that nice light that we have on the character's face. But again, it's just about playing around with it until you find what what you're happy with and what looks good for you. Now we've pretty much completed the look. It looks really, really nice. From here on out, you can just add things and just do little adjustments. So maybe if you wanted a little bit of top light shining down on the hair, just to bring out a little bit of glow, what we can do is we're just gonna duplicate this spotlight here that we've done all of the work on by holding control and then we'll left click and drag and that will then duplicate the light. And we can just raise this up and position it a little bit differently just to get a bit of top light on the character's head here. As you can see, that starts to look really, really nice in the scene. Now again, you don't wanna overdo it and make it too bright. So we can come down, come up to the multiply tab and we're just gonna decrease that just so we've got a tiny touch of lighting on the character's hair. Again, it's not too much, but it looks really, really good in terms of the overall lighting and the image. Let's take a look at these two images side by side and just see how close we've got to replicating that lighting. But as you can see here, guys, it looks really, really awesome. In a matter of minutes, we've taken some real world inspiration to actually create a nice lighting setup for our scene. Okay, so as you can see from the side by side, it looks really good. We're really, really close, but just a couple of things I'm noticing, particularly with the angle of the lighting, we just want to raise this up a little bit and angle it a little bit more up and pointing down to start to get that kind of perfect look that we've got in the actual scene. And again, we can actually just move it back a tad as well, just to reduce some of the harshness of that light. But now you can see the angle of the light is more kind of pointing down as it is in the actual image from the scene. Now, again, it really is up to you how close you wanna get to replicating that lighting. In some instances, what we had looked completely fine, but you know, you might just wanna kind of get the pretty close to that image. So I'm just trying to, you know, show you how we can do that. So I'm just gonna reduce the width a little bit here. And I'm just gonna see what happens when we increase that intensity. But you can see it starts to look really, really nice. The angle of the lighting looks a bit more angular now. So I'm liking the shape of that completely. Now, again, we can adjust things like the hair on the light on the hair, just to again, bring out the hair a little bit more if you wanted to. It really is about what you're trying to go for. And now you can see that looks really, really nice. And again, you know, it's up to you guys. It really is about, you know, being as creative as you want and kind of trying to get the best look that you want. You might wanna make the image a little bit darker or you might wanna keep it how it is. Again, really is up to you creatively what you're trying to go for. So, you know, we can play with stuff like the angle here and just um, angle it a little bit more to make it just a little bit more darker and refined. And I'll do the same with our spotlight, our first one here. Um, I'll increase that darkness up and we'll just change the angle on it just to see overall how it affects the image. And again, you can see if we take it all the way down, it makes it you know a lot darker and so far from what we're going for. But this looks pretty awesome to me, guys. I'm sure you'd agree. Let's take one final look at them side by side and just see how that actually compares. But you can see it looks really, really awesome. Really nice way that you can actually take inspiration from some of your favorite films using a reference image and then start to create your own lighting setup. 
So, you know, it really is going to leave you with tons of ideas and tons of ways that you can start to shape your light to interact with your scene and your characters and get it looking incredible. So that does conclude this tutorial where we've looked at how we can actually take inspiration from real world light setups to then start to shape our scenes. Really hope it helps and really hope to see you guys again soon for another tutorial.